Well, it's been a cold, windy, wet spring, lots of rain, there's been snow in places, but you know, for panfish especially, you know, a lot of times you're waiting for the water temperatures to warm up, you're waiting for the trees to bloom, the lilacs to bloom. We're back down here in Clear Lake, Iowa, which after spending some time down here, you know, I've been really impressed and intrigued by the quality of fishing. And so we wanted to come back down here in the springtime. And what's really cool about this is these big pencil reed beds where you find these fish up in a foot or two of water. And the best part about this, catch them on cane poles. And that's what we're gonna do today. Tell you what, man, this is 20 feet of solid fun. It doesn't look like much, but it, <laughs> like it's got a, stick a big of impact. Dynamite, huh? <laughs> yeah. Dude, look at this. I can dredge this thing out. Look at that. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, we're I gonna... wanted to do a cane pole episode <laughs> ever since we've been doing television. Uh -oh. And now's our chance. <laughs> you know how awkward, you know how awkward these things can be? We're gonna find out today. Oh, 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 oh. oh wow, one. there you go. Yeah, this isn't a finesse deal, is it? <laughs> there he is. Oh, yeah. Those are big smallmouths anywhere. We got her. Oh, yes. wow. Ah, oh, just a beautiful fish. This is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that beast. <laughs> got him? Oh, yeah. Getting silly now. <laughs> Keep on doing it. <laughs> oh, good fish. I don't ever get tired of catching fish like this. Wow, that is gorgeous. Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by Shields, Crestliner, North Dakota Tourism, Blackfish. Bismarck Motor Company, Salmo, Travel Manitoba, and Jason Mitchell Elite Series Fishing Rods. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> right up in the reeds. Hey, this is cool. Look at how black that fish is. There we go. All right. They're getting black. <laughs> That's just cool. <laughs> That was cool. We're just catching, releasing, throwing them back, but what a fun, cool fishing opportunity. That minnow is probably three, four inches underneath the water and that fish just came up, but <laughs> just cool. Jason, did you get to see that one hit it? Yeah, it came right up like a bass. Awesome. One quick thing about that, Jason, when they come in to suck that in, it's kind of like bass fishing a frog. Got to give them a second to close their mouth on it, you know, before you set the hook. I get, I get so anxious. You see them come up, open their mouth, like you said, just like a bass, suck it in and, and you, you set the hook and you pull it right out of their mouth. So you gotta wait for them to close their mouth a little bit before you get them, so. You know, I think a lot of people that grew up fishing, you know, some of your earliest memories fishing are with a cane pole. I guess it's kind of nostalgic to me. You know, I think of, you know, even like when, you know, some of the row boating where you have the cane pole and the spoon and you throw the, the cane pole in the water and you follow the big pike around until it gets tired. You know, where the cane pole never died is with crappie anglers in particular, panfish anglers, especially around heavy cover, whether it's wood, pencil reeds like we're fishing here today, but it's just a simple, effective tactic that it worked 50 years ago and it still works today and it's gonna to work 50 years from now in the sense that you can just be precise, you can just dip that bait down, lift it up and dip it. You know, you take a 14 to 20 foot cane pole, it's just a deadly effective way to fish heavy cover.
There he is. Oh, see that line dart out to the side? That is cool. These are nice fish. Yeah. Oh That's man, cool. look at that. Like you said, dart out to the side, Jason. Check that out. <laughs> this is a spawned out female. This fish one. is already spawned, huh? I think so. Just a quality fish, you know what? Man, just beautiful fish. I'll let her go here. I don't have those childhood memories using the bamboo and all that stuff, but being a fishing guide and putting those people in that position to where they look at me with a big smile, they catch their first crappie, it's a 10 incher or a 14 incher, it don't matter. And the smile they show me and say, you know what? And they'd sit back and take a big sigh of relief and they're like, I haven't done that since I was a kid, which could be 50 years ago. But being a guide and just watching these people bring back their childhood memories, that's what it's all about, guys. <laughs> Boy, they like some of that heavy, you, you look at some of those spots, you don't even know if there's enough water underneath some of those reeds. That's cool. Yeah, you know, this bite here, typically what happens is, you know, early May, they start to get fired up. What we're doing is, it's not necessarily the time of the year, the sun has a lot to do with it, but we're looking for water temperature. So, water temperature starts to hit the upper 50s, and then it starts working into that low 60s, that's when you need to be in here. Once it gets past 65 and the spawn starts to be done, basically it's over. Those fish will push out to that first break and, and start working some of those deeper pockets. And, and then we start looking for them out there. Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by these industry leaders. You can't choose the weather, but you can choose outerwear that works. Technical apparel. Rain gear. Soft shelves, sunwear, when you need to stay comfortable all day, choose Blackfish because you can't choose the weather. At Shields, we speak your language. Crestliner continues to redefine aluminum hull performance with engineering and design that used to be limited to fiberglass. An all-welded aluminum hull, engineered reverse chine, work-hardened sidewalls, full-length keel, and the brand new APX hull design sets Crestliner apart from the competition. Backed by their limited lifetime warranty, now is the time to rethink aluminum. From the makers of the legendary Salmo Hornet, meet the new Salmo Freediver 9. Capable of reaching depths over 25 feet, the Freediver has set the new standard for deep diving walleye crankbaits. See that Freediver, that fish just, just mugged that bait. Individually handcrafted, tank tested, and tuned by Salmo artisans, every Salmo lure produces perfect action every time. Catch more fish with the new Salmo Freediver 9. You know, we've been down to Iowa in the past and film shows, especially ice fishing shows. And what's always intrigued me about Iowa, if you were to look at a map of Iowa, you know, there's not a lot of lakes, there's not a lot of water. You've got Spirit Lake, Okaboji, Clear Lake, you've got the Cedar River, there's a handful of fisheries, Brushy Creek, Rathburn Reservoir. So there's some great fishing in Iowa, but there's not a lot of lakes, like when you go into northern Wisconsin or northern Minnesota. But despite the fact that when you look at a map, there might not be a lot of water that jumps out at you, there's some tremendous fishing. We thought, you know, this is a neat deal where, you know, just the quality of panfish was intriguing to us. We wanted to come back down here in the spring or come down here in open water and do this out of a boat. There's one, guys. Oh, yeah. Look at this one. Oh, that's a Look nice at it dancing. one. Look at dancing. Oh, that's a, that's a great fish. 
Look at that one. That is a nice one, Kevin. This is, is that like cool being dancing 10 years like that? old again on the dock. <laughs> oh, I love it. Isn't it? Uh, Cane pole, no reel, six inches of water. <laughs> I got goosebumps. <laughs> this is cool. Yeah, basically coming up in here, fishing up in here, you know, we were just talking about that, Jason, being stealthy. Coming up in, we don't have the trolling motor down. We just push the nose up into these rushes and, and sure enough, man, if you come in stealthy, catch fish like this. And just a little, I think these are called firefly jigs, just a little hair jig, pretty small jig, which we've caught a few fish without putting any bait on them, just dropping them in. I think for some of these bigger pockets, bigger openings, I like the idea of putting a minnow on. We're kind of dealing with some weather issues too. It rained a bunch yesterday, cooled the water down. I think with these bigger openings in the reeds here, you know, you put a minnow down, you just call these fish in from further away. My main reason right now for using that firefly jig is basically because we just had a huge bug hatch happened here in the last four to five days. So that's why we kind of switched over. A lot of times we will use plastics. We'll use even just a plain jig head and a minnow. You know, there's just a lot of different techniques underneath that cane pole. And one thing I do want to mention with that cane pole too, it's really crucial to keep your line as short as you can. If you're fishing in three, four feet of water, you cannot have six feet of line. It's hard enough with the wind, the boat movement and everything else, dropping it into a six inch hole. And you, you know these fish are in there. But it, it went, once you get too much line out, you got way too much play, it's a lot harder. Plastics, jig head, or, or the, the hair jigs, you can catch them on all three, just depends on, on the day. Everybody, I, I'm a fishing guide, everybody asks me, well, what should I use? You know what, you know what I have in my boat? Everything. Fishing with what you're confident with is half the battle. Once you're confident, you're gonna be able to catch a lot more fish. Here we go. Oh. Missed him? Yeah. Didn't wait for the mouth closed, did you, Jason? Nope. Jump the gun. Drop it back in there. He'll probably eat it without one on there. You think so? Yeah. At least give it a shot while he's still there. Try it for a second. If he doesn't hit it, then we can throw it on. I'll grab one for you. Do you watch him grab it? There he is. There he is. Oh, nice. yeah. All right. Come here. You know, that's a cool way to catch a fish. Been around for a while. <laughs> it's still just as fun. <laughs> well, tell you what, I've never ever filmed an episode with a cane pole. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, the cool thing about this is that, you know, people can make fishing into rocket science. You know, we've got some of these fishing boats now over a hundred grand. But at the end of the day, you can come out here with a $20, $20 cane. fishing rod that's been around for now you might even have one in the rafters of your garage. Pull some line off of an old spool. A really cool fishing opportunity. Cool fish experience. You know, and obviously we're using cane poles, but you can almost describe it as almost like a top water crappie bite because some of these fish hit it as soon as that jig hits the water that are on it. And we're just dipping from pocket to pocket. Oh, there he is. <laughs> there he comes. <laughs> That's a dandy. That is a dandy. That is cool. There we go. Yeah, that's just a beautiful fish. Just love the color on them this time of year. They get just get that black. You know, so when these fish are buried up in that cover, you know, you're not gonna be able to cast anything into these reeds and, and catch anything. You're gonna be snagged up or fouled up all the time. And so basically all you can do is just dip. And a lot of times you're just dipping that jig down maybe six inches, eight inches at the most. You're not even dipping it down a foot because if this jig touches anything, if it touches the stalks, if it touches the bottom, it gets slimed up and gunked up where you're not gonna catch anything. And so that's why these cane poles can be so deadly and so effective in this type of situation. Very effective, very simple, it's cheap, 
there's not much not to like and it's fun when you're hauling them out of that cover i mean it, it reminds me of bass fishing like you're flipping cover for bass it's just a lot of fun oh that didn't take long <laughs> <laughs> That's just cool. Yeah, just great fish. That's what makes crappies so popular. You know, most people are catching crappies, are eating them. They're very prolific fish, so they're a great fish to target for the table. But you know, we also believe and really preach selective harvest. Doesn't matter what time of year it is. You know, just take a few fish for the table, release the rest, release the big fish and just be responsible. There's never a bad time of the year to be responsible. There's never a bad time of the year to fish. You know, so these fish get concentrated this time of year where, you know, we're looking at the end of May. You can see the leaves on the trees are just starting to bud out. You know, spring, summer is officially here. And so these fish will concentrate in these areas every year. You know, these pencil reeds will hold fish every spring. And so it's really important to have some self-restraint where, yeah, come out and enjoy this. It's a phenomenal opportunity. If you catch your lease or, or just use some common sense with some selective harvest, you can't hurt the population unless you abuse the population. So come out here, have fun. It's a phenomenal opportunity. It's an excellent way to introduce kids to fishing, but at the same time, have some common sense. Don't come out here and abuse the resource because otherwise what you're gonna see is that you'll, if you put a lot of pressure and remove a lot of fish from a pencil reed bed, guess what, the next spring there's no fish there. And so use some common sense. A couple different things we've been working on today is trying to come up with a good cadence. I mean, obviously we're catching a lot of fish, but every fish reacts to something a little bit different. So like right now, I'm just two, three twitches, raise it up real slow, twitch it up, and then let it free fall down real slow. Ooh. Oh, da, da. there he is. There it is, oh, nice. Oh, that's a nice one. <laughs> there was hardly enough room to fit that jig. It's like where these reeds are laid down, there's almost always a crappie below it. Boy, isn't that just gorgeous? We got geese honking around. That is beautiful. You know, and the hits are almost instant. I mean, fish with, within a second you know whether there's one there or yeah, not. That's exactly what just happened there, Jason. <laughs> I just dropped it in, seconds, bam, fish on. And he just engulfed it again. Man, they are hungry. Yeah, it, it wasn't no more. I went that sweet spot where I was talking about jigging it, you know, thinking it was gonna be good. And I moved over about 14 inches over to the left, Jason, and bam. There's one. Oh, wow, there you go. Oh, <laughs> he's got me. He almost had me buffaloed in there. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a finesse deal, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, man, perfect, perfect spot on him, too, just like the last one I caught. Yep, when you set that hook, give it a nice sharp pop, buries that hook right in their upper jaw, pull them through the weeds. Yeah, just like that one, he almost had me buffaloed in there. Thank God I had some heavier line. You know, that brings up a really good point is, I used to run one two pound test and I learned real quick that that was not the key. So what I started doing is running six, eight, even some of them, I think I have one that has 10 pound. The fish don't see it. If there's a lot of structure, a lot of cover, the fish really don't pay any attention to that line. Run a little heavier line, you're gonna save yourself some jigs and uh, you can get them out of there when you get in those tight situations where they get you buried in there, so. There. That's how you do it, buddy. <laughs> Look at him. Bring him on in. Another nice one. <laughs> I'm always kind of, you know, I guess not surprised, but impressed by the quality of panfish you have down here. Yeah, we're finding a lot of people starting to make their way and starting to recognize Iowa as one of those pan fisheries. Clear Lake's just really starting to, to really explode for beautiful crappies and ouch, got me. Beautiful fish. There we go. So when you look at 100 yards of these pencil reeds, 10 yards is like the same as going 10 miles in the sense that you, know, you, you cover everything around the bow that you can reach with your cane pole. And you know, that takes a little bit of time because there's so many nooks and crannies, there's so many pockets and holes where these fish can be hiding. It's amazing how thorough 
and small your moves can be where you don't have to run on the other side of the lake, you don't have to even run 50 yards. A lot of times you don't even have the trolling motor down where you're using a push pull or we're taking the big motor and backing up and pushing back in and using our talon just to keep us in one spot. But it's amazing how when you get in these pencil reeds, it can be very slow and methodical where you just pick your way through them and you know and fish your way through it. And it takes a while to fish your way through it, but you go 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet. And so it's just amazing how many fish you can pick up with every incremental move. Oh, donkey. It's a donkey. That's a nice one. Oh, baby. <laughs> this is fun. It's like a big old Like you said, it's trying to get everything situated. I got a <laughs> cluster going on well, here. Oh, they hit you. It was like a big old styrofoam cup coming out of the reeds. <laughs> Look at that one. That's a beautiful fish. Holy smokes. Once again, perfect hook set right in the top lip like that. You know, I missed him that first shot. He came up and sniffed it and he had my minnow. So with no minnow, I dropped it back in there thinking maybe we'd get a chance to get him. And sure enough, man, he came back. Look at that dandy. Just beautiful fish. Oh. How can you refuse that? Come on. Oh, here we go. See one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a giant. There. <laughs> <laughs> They're starting to get black, aren't they? Yeah. I don't even have any hair left on that jig. Yeah, these are just beautiful fish. All right. <laughs> Look at how aggressive he was. Tell you what, he went in there, whacked it, missed him, dropped it right back on him. He was so hot, or she was, you know, female. She was so hot, didn't take seconds, bam. Fish on. Back when I first grew up, the crappie population in here was crazy good. That was back when they didn't have limits, it seemed like. I don't even think there was a limit back then. Now the limit's 25, which is still a lot of fish in my opinion, but the crappie population has really started to, to rebound. The quality of the fish, and this is something we've noticed amongst all the fish right now. The yellow bass, they're some of the biggest yellow bass we have ever seen in Clear Lake. The crappies, they're starting to become some of the better quality crappies that we've seen in a very, very long time. The walleyes this year, there's a lot of healthy 18, 19 inchers. You know, I just want to give a lot of credit to the DNR and the Iowa Fisheries Department for doing what they do best, putting fish back into our resources. It is a put and take lake. Those fish, they stock, we harvest, you know, especially on the walleyes, but they do a great job and the quality is there right now and it's going to be there for years to come. <laughs>